Carol leaves for New York in 1971. Cleveland elects a Republican mayor. You're a council veteran now. You've been in council 10 years by 1973. Ed Turk is the council president. And it's not working out. Uh, the Democratic Party chairs, there were three of them at the time, decided that, that Ed Turk wasn't a good fit uh, as, as council president with Ralph Perk as mayor. So they decided to make a change. Tell us about when you first learned about what was going on, uh, about their thinking about making a change, and how that came about. Well, there were three party chairmen, and, and I was one of them. Well, I thought it was Lou, for a while it was Garofoli, Corrigan, and Lou, and then it became Garofoli, Corrigan, and Forbes, correct? Well, Lou wanted, Lou, yeah, Lou wanted to. Was originally Lou, and then you were yeah. chairman by then? The, uh, it was kind of determined that, that and, and, and Lou kind of knew it, was, it, it wasn't a good fit. He was in D.C., okay, and, and Carl had something to do with that also, all right? Don't, okay. don't give it up. But it, it really wasn't a good fit. And it, it it didn't last that long if it lasted at all. And so then you everybody said, look, you know, you're here. You're the, you know, you're, you're the president of council. And this is this is kind of the way to go. And, and, and he, even Louis agreed that that was, was a thing to do. Can you talk a little bit about how you, about those, the, t the time leading up to you becoming council president? And the, the, the you know, the backroom yeah, stuff uh, that took place. Well, Tony and, and, and Corgan, there had been some concerns about, about Eddie at Turk and, and Ralph Perk. There really was some concerns about that. And it, it really didn't, didn't like being president of council. He really didn't. Uh, the decisions that had to be made and they had to be made on the spot and you had to deliver these things and it and it was a guy that was kind of a you know he didn't like to be tied down so the party said look we got to make some changes and there were they considered two of us it was me and jerry uh, jerry mcfall and uh, so they called us over and jerry jerry said in no uncertain terms i don't want to be president of council so George, you can do it. He said, I want to be the sheriff. And if, if Jerry had decided he wanted to be the president of council, it would have been bloodletting on the, on the floor of council because you'd had the blacks and the whites after each other. But he said, no, I, he said, I want to be the sheriff. Y'all support me for sheriff, I'll support George. And that's how it came down. It was, it was, it was, now, it was, the governor had to be brought into this also because... Was it Gilligan? Gilligan, they, Ed, Ed Turk was made chairman That's of, right. of the Public, Ed, Utilities. public Utilities Committee. Right. right. Ed, Ed went to, well, that had that, that had to be determined first. Okay, Ed went to be the head of the PUCO, which was okay with him. And so that, and so when Jerry came back, Jerry supported me for the president of council, and it, it was no rancor, went, went that way. That was the last peaceful moment we had, I guess, until I left. Well, it, there was a period, then you became council president, and there was a feeling within the party that Turk was too easy on Perk. Well, early on, you made it clear that those days were over. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> and I got along with Perk better than Turk ever did. Eventually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it, yeah, that's right. We, we, yeah, we were... The party, they don't want a more perk. Uh, but we had a city to run. We had, a, we had a city to run. And Ralph and I, we had s some few caustic moments when we first started. But we recognized we had a city to run. And it was very easy to get along with. And I, I wasn't going to go and just raise hell to raise hell. And we, we, we ran the city. We ran the city. And whatever he needed, as it pertained to the city council, we did it. The politics of the party, I left that. We left it at the door of City Hall. And we took care of the politics outside of City Hall. Once you got into City Hall, it was doing the business of, of city. 
and 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 I think people recognize that I probably got along with I did get along better with um, with Ralph than they expected. But we did think we ran the city, we made the city move. When did you begin your radio show? Was it in the se it with? It was seventy or seventy one. This is at W E R E. You be, you had become friends with the owner of the station. Yeah, and he talked you into doing a nightly call-in show. <laughs> Correct. That's why I never got elected mayor. Correct. There's a radio show that stopped me from being mayor. Well, I made a lot of money. <clears throat> okay, I made a lot of money, and. Um, I had three daughters to, to um, I practiced law, and I had three daughters to support and to educate. And uh, um, I, I, I worked hard, I saved my money, and we educated our, our daughters. They went to the top black schools in the country. Didn't you invest in radio stations with I bought a radio station. Yeah, I bought I bought I bought a couple of radio stations. I bought one in in uh, South Carolina and I bought one in Tonopah, Nevada. So you in life you balance the equities. And I, I went on the radio every night and I talked about white people every night. Okay? The ratings went off the shot. And uh, <laughs> I remember one night I, I went on the radio and a, a lady called me and she was raising hell with me. So I said, are you white? She said, yes. So I hung up on her. And that kind of foolishness went on every night. It was, it was good for ratings. It was all theater. It really was. It was theater. It was good for ratings. And that lady, I, 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 I went, I was campaigning for mayor, and I went over to the west side one night. And the lady told me, she said, Mr. Forbes, do you remember one night you told a lady, you're white, and you hung up on her? She said, that was me. She said, and I ain't going to vote for you either. <laughs> so it's says, all fair in love and politics. But, but I know that was the reason why I, I did not get it. Like, and I wasn't mad about it. I wasn't, I wasn't upset about it. Your council president for four years, Perk gets beat in the primary in 1977. Doesn't even advance to the general election. You and most people in the party <clears throat> support are, are with Ed Fian. Uh, Dennis had been in council with you for a few, for four or five, six years, including time when you were council president. He tried to defeat you at least once, maybe twice, Every time. as council president. Every time. Right. Okay. And he becomes mayor, and so begins the uh, most turbulent, probably the most turbulent two-year period in the city's history. And Perfect. you're at the center of it because you are viewed as, as the person who has to slow him down. And, and you develop a reputation as, you know, you're, you're there on behalf of corporate Cleveland, the civic community. Dennis was at war with everyone. You want, can you talk about that a little bit? Well, but, but prior to Dennis being, being the mayor, you, uh, when, Ed, when Ed Fian was, was running, we had a city ward convention where, where Ed was nominated to be the, uh, the nominee for the mayor of the city of Cleveland. But we also put up Jimmy Bell to the, no, Jimmy Bell put it, they put it, ran against Finn for the nomination. Well, the blacks, we, we did that as, it's kind of a normal type of thing, was knowing that Finn would be the candidate. And so Jimmy said, well, no, man, I can beat this guy. All right? So we, here we got Jimmy Bell, won't get out. <laughs> I said, Jimmy, it's, it's time to move out. So he stays in. And anyway, Ed ends up being the, the nominee for, for the party. And that's when, when Dennis comes in and with the Wiseman group and the two sisters 
One was the... Uh, Betty Antonia Gradini. Yeah, yeah. And these were, these were some tough years. Those were some tough years with, with, with Dennis. Dennis had his own ideas of what should happen, what shouldn't happen. And then the business community uh, wanted to make progress. And in the end, in the end of it, uh, I'll never forget one day, uh, Wiseman came in, wanted to make peace. But it was, they had done too much damage. He was heavily influenced uh, by Bob Wiseman.